Hi, this is the last video uh, of this uh, playlist, of this series, uh, and uh, in this video we will examine the uh, inverse procedure of the analog-digital converter, which is the digital-to-analog converter. Uh, these uh, embedded components in microcontrollers accept as input a digital value and convert it to uh, an analog value proportional to the digital uh, indication. As you can see here, if we try to reconstruct, for example, uh, a, a scene wave uh, by uh, successively uh, supplying digital values that uh, approximate the uh, curve of the scene value, we have errors. We do not have a smooth transition which uh, would match exactly the uh, scene value. Uh, and uh, how close we will get to the origin to the scene, va scene wave that we would like to generate depends on uh, uh, the rate of the digital to analog converter. This means how fast we update the output value, the output analog value, uh, and of course the resolution, uh, which is defined in a similar way to the analog digital converter we saw in our previous video. Uh, of course, you can also find plenty of information in, uh, on the internet concerning the operation of the digital to analog converters. Here in this video, we will example how we uh, we will examine how we will uh, employ the digital to analog converter offered uh, from the STM32F4 Discovery Board. Um, so. Uh, first of all, let me see from my uh, notes uh, how we create a project from uh, CubeMX. Uh, as we did in our previous videos, uh, when we start a new project, the first thing we will be asked is to select uh, the memory, the, the MCU uh, part. Uh, we try to find MCU uh, that is STM32407. Here it is, 407 uh, VG. Here is my family. And then I start the project. And now let's see uh, in which pin can we get the analog value from the digital to analog uh, converter. Uh, this is actually uh, the, um, the PA4 uh, pin. So now that my project has started, I find the PA4, this one here, and when I click on this, I select to be DAC output 1. I th think this is what I have to do. Okay, and then when I go to the left of the analog uh, parts, this is selected the DAC, and when I click it, I get the parameter configuration, the parameter settings. Um, uh, you will see all the things that I can get, but there are not many things that I can uh, 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 configure here. Uh, so nothing else we will need will be needed in this project. I would simply move to the project manager. Uh, this is my ordinary path I used in my previous videos, and I would give a name for the project. Let's call it Duck. Don't forget to uh, change to MDK ARM, and then I would uh, generate the code. I have already done this to uh, avoid uh, spending time uh, on things that uh, I have uh, shown in previous videos. So I jump directly to my project in the uh, Microvision environment. Don't forget once again that uh, the project created by, uh, by CubeMX uh, would probably cause in, uh, errors if you try to, to build it. Uh, this is because um, the start uh, the startup option is not checked and some files are missing for this reason. So as we did in our previous videos, we select the startup uh, uh, option. Uh, but again, we will have some uh, files that will be created twice and we have to remove one of them. Uh, please, I beg you, go back to my previous videos and find how uh, I did this. Now, if my project compiles well, let's see what uh, should we add in the, in the source uh, code. 
so first of all we have to uh, add the initialization after the default initialization of the DAC and the uh, GPIO. This is in my main file uh, within the main after this point here. This is where I should add these uh, instructions and what do they do? The first one starts uh, the digital to analog converter and then I set the value with this uh, option uh, here which actually says that I need the DAC channel number one uh, the DAC alignment is 8 bits but on the right and the value that I would like to convert to its analog corresponding one is the value 64 let's keep this value for the present and um, and see what we will get at the output at the PA4 uh, pin uh, in my infinite loop, actually, I would get nothing inside initially, but uh, just uh, have some values, but don't, uh, uh, let's not explain them at this point. Let's uh, keep in mind that regardless of what this uh, for loop does, which actually does not do uh, anything special right now, since I have commented this command here, which is the same with the set value I used here. So for this reason, since this is in comments, uh, this while loop will uh, do uh, will not do anything uh, that affects my DAC. The only thing that affects my DAC is this command here that sends the value 64 uh, to my um, uh, digital to analog converter. Now, let's see uh, the setup I have here. Uh, as you can see, I have uh, a connection of uh, with a red uh, uh, connector to my PA4 and the black uh, cable will be connected, will be, I will touch with this uh, a ground. I will actually touch the ground uh, at this uh, free connector. But then uh, these values, the ground and the PI uh, output are connected to my... Uh, to my multimeter that I will uh, move it in, in front of my camera in order to see uh, the results that I get. So initially this is disconnected. I put it on the table carefully. Uh, remember that uh, when you uh, have placed the code uh, you do the build no errors, I have already uh, built it earlier anyway. Uh, we uh, make sure, not from this option here, but from options for target DAC. I make sure that uh, my ST link is connected. Now it is disconnected, so I don't see anything. But if I, uh, if, if I connect the USB cable, Okay, uh, now you will see on my settings that it has been recognized correctly. So I'm now free to download my project that has just been built. Good. Uh, and let's place a breakpoint here. Let's insert a breakpoint. And let's start a debug session. Good. Uh, I start running the program and as I expect, uh, it stops, uh, doesn't it? No, it didn't take my, uh, my breakpoint. So let's place it here in the main at this command before I set the value. Debug insert breakpoint let's start again running the application i have probably to reset it let's first start the debug session and before i run for the first time I insert my breakpoint. It is inserted. Let's start running it now. Okay, now it has uh, stopped uh, at this point. 
what I will do is to show you uh, my indication uh, that I get from the um, from the multimeter if I touch the as you can see it is zero so if I continue running let's see what will be the next value that I will get instead of zero as you will see the value is not zero it's about 0 0.6 0 0.7 No, it's zero actually, because I have not, let's touch more carefully because you can understand that my cables are not fixed well. So you can see that the value is indeed 0 0.7. Okay. Let's stop for a while the debugging and change this value. This is the value I sent to my digital to analog converter 64. Let's double it 128. We would expect that the analog value of 0 0.7 will be also doubled. So I will get probably uh, 1.4 volts. Let's see, is this true? Let's stop debugging and compile again. My code. With a new value, okay. Uh, download it to my development board. Downloading is completed. And let's start a debug session. Okay, I start running. Oh yes, I, it stopped to my breakpoint, but I continue. And let's see what is now uh, the new value that I get from my uh, digital to analog converter. It's zero for the present, but when I touch the ground, you can see that it's about 1.3, 1.4 as was, ex as was expected. It's 1.54, okay. This is the result that confirms that my digital to analog converter works fine. So I stop the debug session uh, and I disconnect my board. And before ending this last video, let's see what would happen if I would like to create, for example, a scene wave. Uh, this cannot be seen with a multimeter, but with an oscilloscope, for example. Uh, but uh, just to explain you what would I do is that I would not uh, set the value here but instead I would uh, have a for loop that will gradually stand, uh, sense uh, all the scene wave values. You can see that I create uh, these scene uh, wave values with this operation here. Then I digitize them and I also add an offset of 128 because I do not want negative values. I want values between, for example, 0 up to 255. And then I send each one of these uh, values uh, with this command that is currently uh, commanded. If we had uh, an available uh, oscilloscope here, you would see that it would indeed create um, a scene wave value. Thank you very much for watching.